hello everyone and welcome to the channel we're back with another review preview of something exciting cynthia bailey like i told you she was uh over there doing her darn thing on lifetime if i had to quantify how many minutes she portrayed in this movie or lifetime movie I could say about maybe 15 minutes, okay? She didn't really have a role, really. Uh, she was more of a cameo type uh, player in this particular movie. And it's because she doesn't have any acting skills. And she probably couldn't read her lines or couldn't um, memorize her lines. But I'm going to give her A for effort. Um, she kind of played... Um, her character was named Karen. And she had this daughter who was really struggling in school. And it wasn't, she wasn't having a behavior problem. They just thought that she was implying herself. You know, she wasn't doing or listening to what the instructions that her teachers were giving her. And she wasn't trying, you know, hard enough to fit in and all this kind of stuff. And personally, she had no problems, really. She just, it seems like she just had a case of dyslexia. So the film is pretty much set with this young lady who uh, is named, what is her name? I took notes and now I can't find my notes, y'all. Okay, her name was Kelsey Mawima, but she played Kayla. And she was the daughter of Cynthia Bailey and this other man. I, don't, I guess I, I didn't really pay him no attention either because he didn't have no role either. But um, he had more lines than Cynthia. Cynthia was more so like the dutiful, submissive wife and um, whatever her husband said went and this, that, and the third until she got mad, pissed off, and then she became the one who was wearing the pants and giving all the orders and instructions. Uh, so the name of the movie was Cruel Instructions. And thank you, Michael Armstrong, one of my family members here on the tube. He wrote down or um, typed down in the comment section the name of the uh, movie Cynthia Bailey was being uh, premiering in. And like I said, she really just had a cameo. She really wasn't the, the main uh, characters of the movie. It was her daughter. Um... And her name was Kayla throughout the movie. And they didn't really show that scene. They were cutting out some parts from what I had took out of the images on this particular movie. But she was an outstanding young actress. Um, you can tell she studied the uh, role of acting. And she honed all her skills. Because she had me want to cry, uh, you know, in there somewhere sometime when she was playing the, her part. And her. Uh, She's just a, a great young actress. And I feel that Cynthia may have felt she's missed her boat. Because I could see her being a good actress or a good supporting actress. But she's what, 54, 55? And to me, I don't think Cynthia's attention span will hold her to be able to learn her lines and be a part of a big show without them hand feeding her, her lines or whatnot. So, I think she missed her boat, but if she could continue to stay with the company, like Lifetime, they may can find her other little small parts. At least it'll be something of a uh, residual check that she can get each month or each uh, episode she appears on whatever show. So, I think she needs to make friends, continue to make friends with Lifetime, and she can still showcase her talents. Because I'm like, hey... Do you, if you're getting some good movies where it's showing you in a good role and it's not making you look stupid all the time and, and, and like you ain't got no brains or no thoughts. Because I really saw, well, damn, okay, I see what they have been saying about Cynthia, some other personality. Because the, in the film, she really was headstrong towards the end of the film. She was like, uh-uh, we finna go get my baby, this, that, and the third. And I don't care what you saying, she coming out of that school. But you gotta watch it. It's on Lifetime. It's called Cruel Instructions, not Cruel Intentions, like I thought it was. That's another movie that played way back when. Um, but it's with Cameron Mayhem. She's the a uh, running actress uh, in the movie, um, the white heavyset lady, 
Uh, she was very good. She was playing every kind of part. She was, you know, kind of like she was bipolar. You know, she kept going in and out of these different plots or, or settings. She was trying to make us uh, view her as. And she was good. She played in um, Touched by Angel, I believe, or Ghost Whispers or something. She's been around for a long time. But that's Karen. I mean, Cameron Mayhem. And I don't know who that gentleman was. But like I said, he didn't really have no parts either. Um, didn't get a chance to get his name when I was looking at the cast members because the only ones they really showed was Cameron, uh, Kel Kelsey who played Kayla, Morgan Taylor Campbell who played Amanda, and then of course Cynthia Bailey who, who played Karen. But that's Cameron Mayhem. Uh, um, you look her up, you can find the pictures and the uh, shows she was on uh, throughout her acting career. And that was a scene, I think, when she was talking to Michael, or Mike was inter interviewing her on his station. Uh, but, like I said, the, the two young actresses, uh, that's Morgan Taylor Campbell, she played Amanda. They were exceptional, exceptional. And I was like, okay, they're going to they gonna go far in their acting career. But, like I said, for the pit part that they put Cynthia as, which was a married woman uh, with a rebellious child, she thought. The child was rebellious, which she wasn't. She had a learning disability. And she wasn't trying to make, you know, big things out of anything. It's just sometimes parents don't really listen to their kids. I mean, really, really listen to them. Instead of listening and then making up in your mind what you already going to do for them without even paying attention to what they're saying or taking it all in or what they're saying. So, she played her role. How little it was. Uh, it made me believe <laughs> <laughs> that she was just this woman, this mother who, you know, was just going by whatever the daddy said until somebody had to peep game and tell her, look, you need to go get your daughter out of this uh, school or, or treatment center because they did my daughter this this way. They almost killed her, da 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 da, da So you need to go check on your daughter. And uh, Cynthia came alive in her role as Karen, the mother of Kayla. And that was, you know, that was real good to see, you know. Um... And let me see. I went on to tvfanatic.com to kind of read y'all some uh, of what they had put together as a storyline. So y'all can kind of see how the story fits together. But it really was based on parents letting a school system tell them that their children cannot come back. It was almost like when I was in high school. You basically, if they felt you were rebellious and you were just getting in trouble all the time and get suspended, they had uh, called it as an alternative schooling uh, was open campus. And that's what Portia Williams was a part of. Uh, and they sent her behind over there. And hopefully she got her diploma or her GED. I'm not sure. But she wasn't kept in the school system because she was problematic. Uh, and they were going to have that mess. They wanted the other students who were acting right, who were following orders and behaving right, to stay in the normal school setting. But when you had those rebels that didn't care, and, you know, and they weren't bad kids. They, they probably had learning disabilities, you know what I'm saying? But us looking on the outside only and, and not thinking about what's going on or testing them. They get thrown over there in open campus and they don't really care if you survive or not. You just there. They just there to get a paycheck. And for the ones that really seem like they want to do something, you know, it'll be those handful. Other than that, you know, they just going through the motions. So then, uh, but evidently, they don't stepped it up another notch. So now, if your insurance covers it, um, some schools have partnered with certain treatment programs where you can. Uh, send your child off to another state or whatnot, and they can get the treatment that they need and the, the orderliness or conduct behavior under control. But you got to watch it because, you know, some of these people, just like you see on this movie, they just be taking your money, treating your kids like shit, and damaging them for life. And then you think, you know, everything is going good with them, and they're sitting up there trying to tell you what's really going on. And then sometimes when they try to tell you, in front of the people of the residential center you don't send them to, they can get mistreated after you leave because you don't know. And uh, you they don't really give you the phone calls or anything. So you got to watch where you have to put your kids when the state get involved or your school, that's a state-funded school, 
tell you without they can't come here but they can go here and they have these pretty brochures like you sending them off to somewhere swanky and uh well reserved and they're gonna take care of your kid and you know it's almost like the rich folks sitting there turning off the board in school you you've heard their presentation of what the school is about you walked it through but you ain't actually get a chance to sit there and talk with the kids yourself and just see all the kids parents that were going there because it's not like that. It's like they show you what they need to show you to make you feel your child is safe and then it's another thing that happens when you gone off campus and they got your child locked up like they in prison somewhere so they was trying to give you an eye-opening experience so if you do have like a rebel child or a child that the school system wants to throw away uh and giving you alternatives okay it's either gonna be juvenile or you're gonna send them to this alternative treatment center where they can work on their behavior and yet still get their uh ged or high school diploma okay so going into um the tv fanatic uh it's called cruel intentions it's a post-mortem review kelsey mawima on her darkest scene and elevating the voices of survivors okay this article was written up by jasmine blue on march 12th okay and i think uh this show actually premiered on march 13th if i got my sources right from my fam Mar uh, michael armstrong um because <coughs> i saw it uh this afternoon which is sunday uh the 14th i think we're on ain't today the 14th sean what's the day oh hell okay the 13th so it must have been the 12th which was saturday okay but i watched it sunday but anyway it goes on to say as the article she read up she says from beginning to end cruel instructions is a phenomenal film with a fantastic cast helmed by dual talents kelsey that's kelsey who plays kayla uh mawima and morgan taylor campbell okay they are the very core of the film and the heart and soul cruel instructions struck gold with the effortless chemistry between the two something that only elevated a powerful provocative yet alarming film that will sit w with you well after the credits roll kayla's journey is a frustrating one as someone familiar with the pitfalls a child will fall through when they suffer learning disabilities thanks to experiences with siblings one heart's ache for, for kayla not only was she facing bullying at the school but she went through extended periods feeling as if she was stupid because of her undiagnosed dyslexia kayla was proof of how a child can slip through the cracks of an educational system um mawama mawima portrayal of kayla anguish from her battles with dyslexia to her sexual identity issues and her anxiety and ps well ptsd were all so on spot and well done she captured all the little nuisance of the above with her physical performance and yeah i forgot about when she was in there she met a lot of different people as well and one she was approached by some girl who was out outwardly gay or lesbian and i guess she sensed that kayla uh, which is her was feeling the same thing of being attracted to girls now whether it was or not whether uh they were just insinuating that kayla went that way pretty much and if she wasn't she sure was thinking about being one after the fact so they touched on that a little bit uh going back to the article it says worse yet she wasn't getting the support she needed at home either uh, real housewives of atlanta alum cynthia bailey played her mother while things turned around by the end it was disappointing how little kayla's mother listened to her and the frustrating way she allowed her husband to take the lead in dismissing kayla and shipping her off to this residential treatment program kayla didn't need some course correction or reform the girl needed the proper tools and an iep uh, that suited her learning style ironically despite the horrors of that unspeakable place they sent her to it was there where she got the official diagnosis she needed yes because kayla actually was in math class and the astute teacher that was teaching her he knew exactly what was going on with her and he wanted to get her help however uh karen mayhem i forgot what her name was on the show but which is the white lady right there you broke that, Sean. 
um, she pretty much had tellers running all around on. They were just telling everybody business, and then that's how she found out that Kayla was uh, telling uh, her teacher about some of the comments and goings that was going on, and she wanted and and tried to enlist his help, but he would quickly shut her down and pretty much didn't do anything i'm i'm assuming with from what i was watching in the show with her dyslexia nothing was done but um she did find out because she did trust that her teacher was telling her the truth about what she was experiencing when she would look at numbers or letters on her paper when she was asked to do uh some type of work with her schooling so, uh, that was a good thing that came out of it. But, to tell you the truth, the school system that she was going to, prior to them saying she couldn't come back, they should have did that IEP or that simple diagnosis test for her instead of just thinking she was just lazy and didn't want to do anything. Okay, so going back to the article, it said, ironically, despite the horrors of that unspeakable place they sent her to, it was there where she got the official diagnosis she needed. She also found some of the things she needed and desired. It's disturbing on its own that she had to find any of those things that there at all. And that's true. She should have learned it on the outside, living her normal life at home with her family. But usually when, you know, family get too much into making money, going, doing things, not really paying attention to their children. Because your mother and your father are the first ones that should be noticing when you're struggling and when you're not. Sometimes it's not, they try to hide things from their parents. But actually, Kayla in this particular uh movie she was actually expressing herself as best she could because let's keep in mind she was just 16 years old okay uh but anyway uh going back to the article said i love seeing her fall in love while in this terrible place of course even that got steeped in trauma when connie tried to discipline the gay out of her hiding behind the cult like religious indoctrination that oozed throughout the film okay that was her name connie um which was like the head mistress of the school that basically had an end with, uh, I guess, different principals at the school that when they felt they had problem kids, um, they would send them to her institution that she was running and managing or whatever. Okay, so it's like money changing hands uh, to different organizations to keep these kids uh, in a system that was just being really cruel to them and they were going undiagnosed and treated like pretty much slaves in a sense uh, and that's pretty much how it had played throughout the whole uh, movie and then going back to the article it said all you could think about was how this mama where Kayla came to grips with herself which should be a period where she came can come into her own as a queer woman. Uh, will forever be tied to negativity and wrongness because of Connie. I'll take years, or it will take years to work through the level of trauma and negative association to love, especially queer love, because Connie or, or some of the other girls suggested that her being queer was wrong. And technically, that's what they really do still in society, if you want to know the truth, especially among the Christian race. But that's another whole story for another whole video. Uh, it said, admin all the darkness of this film, there was beauty seeing the lifelong bond that Kayla and Ad Amanda formed. It was a, f a true friendship born out of mutual trauma, but they became so inextricable linked uh, that they brought out the very best in one another. Throughout the film, noting was more powerful than their love for each other and how far they were willing to go for one another. It's not hyperbolic to point out that they quite literally saved each other and by and by far the film most shocking bone chilling scene amanda re rescues kayla after a near suicide or uh, a near, near successful suicide and if not for kayla summoning up the strength and courage and due to her love and devotion to her best friend amanda would have died and they never would have gotten out of that awful place on the other side of things we saw campbell's uh, Amanda, a prime example of the stigma, stigmatization of mental illness, her mother deemed her bipolar as something that made her unmanageable and that how Amanda ended up bouncing from one treatment facility to the next. It was upsetting to see these young women who felt as if everyone in her 
everyone in her life was giving up on her. They treated her like a lost cause. So she internalized that, and it was something that continued when she got to the facility. The film was filmed, filled to the brim with horrific, traumatizing scenes from the moment the girls had to strip and endure vaginal exams in front, front of staff members to the allusion to staff members sexually abusing the girls. There were many triggering, despicable aspects. They also endured all types of physical, verbal, and psychological abuse. It was chilling to see how Miss Connie managed to break all of these girls down through several tactics that uh, revel many of the techniques used on prisoners of war and interrogations. The girls were essentially commodities. Yeah, they were cash cows pretty much because they showed was milking the parents' inc uh, not income, but uh, their insurance program that uh, took care of treatment facilities such as these. Okay, so we got to celebrate them that they did what they needed to do. They had the, um, I said, the gumption or the tenacity to figure things out at such a young age and get the system checked. Okay, but going back to the article, it says Miss Cunning drugging these girls beyond reason and sharing that they paid kickbacks to harbor these girls for the sole purpose of maximizing out insurances and profiting from our. Uh, and profiting from enraging. It was a reflection of just how interconnected corruption is across many systems. As satisfying as it was to see Kayla and Amanda get out of that place, it's still haunted by the movie end that the rest of those girls did not. Miss Connie would still do exactly what she's been doing to thousands of other girls, enabled by a series of workers and the system itself. The other girls would remain in that hell hole, carrying each other tearing each other apart to survive and enduring unspeakable things because they didn't have people who could save them. Uh, Kayla and Amanda got out, but new girls soon will replace them, and that was only one facility. There are hundreds of others. It made the ending bittersweet because of the realiz realism, but it's that realism that made for a compelling piece, triggering, disturbing, and shocking. Yes, but compelling all the same. Okay, then it says, uh, Cruel Instructions was a hunting film, deeply uncomfortable but arguably necessary to watch to understand the severity of these programs because awareness breeds action and change. But it was also heavy and dark, and we chatted with Kelsey Mawimna, uh, which is the black actress, about some of the most challenging aspects of the film and her words for the real survivors. Okay, so that's basically what it was. These kids endured a lot because they weren't grown. Uh, Amanda, which was going to be 18 in some months, she could basically check her own self out and go on and live her life because she, as society, would deem her as being grown. Kayla was still in her sophomore year. Uh, in high school, she was 16 years old, and she had a caring family, which was Cynthia and uh, her husband, that I don't remember what his name was, other than it being Mr. Adams. That was <laughs> Kayla's father on the show. And he just looked, I don't know, he was just like a little dipstick. He didn't really want to be bothered. He was just believing everything the teachers and the principal was saying about his daughter instead of him really listening to his daughter and being on her side. But it just is what it is. That's some, how some parents do. But it was a touching scene. Uh, Cynthia, like I said, if you had to total her whole, um, what do you call it, scene or her acting scene throughout the movie, it would have been like 10 or 15 minutes of what she had based on her character. Because it was just a motherly role and she played it well. She should have played it well because she's a mother. And, you know, she really wasn't given too much direction and I'm pretty sure they just let her rememberize those lines that she could ad lib meaning make up something uh, for them to tape without them having to have to coax her through it and you know it was okay but like I said um, she would have been a very good supporting actress if Cynthia would have went into the field uh, a little earlier on in her lifetime instead of trying to catch it at the tail end because you know most people such as us, when we get in our 50s, we kind of lose here and there the structure of maintaining uh, 
remembering lines or and stuff of that thing or hell just remembering period you say and you know maybe that's a, a onset of dementia or something uh that we get or it could be stress related where you just have so much in your brain to uh cipher through you just forget things you know i've got so stressed out one time when i had my own business um well, I forgot my passcode to uh, my ATM debit card. I was just, I was frustrated that day. I just had too much on my mind. And that's when I knew I had to get a hold of myself, okay? And, and become stress-free on a lot of things that I was engaging in that wasn't um, lucrative. Not really lucrative, making me any money. But uh, I needed to decide some certain things in my life because just forgetting stuff like that. That can't happen. You know, you're either on a lot of stress or you got some dementia, onset dementia coming on. At the time, it was just stress. But as I get older, I'm noticing that, shit, I can't rem uh, remember what I said I was going to do two minutes ago. Got to write shit down now. Um, and, I, and then I still think it's because of that COVID test that I took, the two shots. Because I wouldn't like that to have, you know, these shots that I'm forgetting things i need to be on point with you know so well like i say i said that to say this i'm proud of cynthia bailey for stepping out uh showing up and improving her acting ability if she really does enjoy this type of um acting or industry she needs to do some studying and she needs to definitely try to stay with lifetime and play little bits pieces parts you know what i'm saying if that's what she want to do it's not as lucrative i'm sure being on a lifetime special unless you're the main character and you can learn some lines uh but it's still rewarding and um i i would rather see her on a platform like this than being on some ratchet tv show you know what i'm saying get on some lifetime shit you know get on something where you act in a character and and not you acting yourself and we just forming our opinions on your behind so i don't know something might need to call up portia williams and say baby girl you need to come on over here and get with me slow your life down but you still be on tv trying to do this in the third but i'm sure ratchet tv might pay a little bit more but Cynthia done got seasoned. And when I say seasoned, I'm talking about she old hell. She can't be doing all that stuff that young folks do. And Portia ain't, she ain't young no more. She need to be settling her behind down. Because 40 ain't young no more. It's getting you to the point where you need to be settling down. And you need to be holding on to your money. Frivolous, I'm not frivolous, it's frugally. But that's all I got, y'all. If y'all interested in watching Cynthia do her little thing. As a little mother hen, a submissive mother hen, but it's better than where she was on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. It was very refreshing to me to see her play a role that's similar to home. You know what I'm saying? That one she could digest and could make believable. Because her facial expression was on point. But I always told y'all, Cynthia always had a face and fashion. Face and fashion, okay? So she's showing improvement over that lifetime. And so I salute her. I be like, job well done. We're celebrating you over here. And you just stay a little bit over there and make this money. And leave Nene and Portia alone. Because if you had the right connections to get in something, a movie like this, filming on Lifetime. Everybody know Lifetime now. It's like being on the own network. You know what I'm saying? Let Nene and Portia figured out for their own self. Don't try to loop them in and bring them in if they ain't what you want to do. Because they might supersede you. But like I said, then again, you know, when you when when you are in a position where you can then bring somebody up, then bring them up. But I would rather see you bring somebody up that ain't really been in the field. You see what I'm saying? Because you need to have her choices. She made them let her fly. Portia done made her choices and I'm been in the field long enough to stop making these disastrous decisions and forming it based on her looks and this, that, and the third in her body. You know what I'm saying? Forget all that shit, okay? Because she's too old for that, too. The thing, it ain't going to be going south one way or the other as she keep aging. Unless she's going to get keep getting cut on. So, again, make you some new friends, Cynthia. And stay in the acting that you really want to do. Um, 
I was pleased to see you on a totally different platform, and I'm proud of you. And I hope you uh, have many, many more endeavors where I see you. If it's on Lifetime, and only on Lifetime, I will take the time to come over there, see what you're doing, and be able to come back on the channel and say, Well done, Cynthia Bailey. Um, Daily. Don, that's a small name, ain't it? Hey, what my last name is? I mean, my name. My heel. Okay. Cynthia Bailey heel. Okay, Cynthia Bailey. We're going to just we'll get your a married name. We're going to put out that Cynthia Bailey because you ain't put on the credits rolling, Cynthia Bailey heel. You you want to keep your name, baby. I understand that. So, congratulations, Cynthia Bailey. Congratulations, girl. I'm so proud of you. So, very, very proud of you. And your mother probably is proud of you, too. And just stay away from Bravo. Don't go knocking on their doors for no handouts, baby. Keep you doing you okay don't always look bad go forward because everything in the back is your past keep moving forward cynthia because you're doing good all right and that's all i got if y'all want to go over to lifetime if you have it on your tv station go and support cynthia bailey it's a small role it's a cameo role but hey she got to start somewhere you can't always have the main meal. You got to take in the baby breast milk first. Okay. And then you move on to solids. You see what I'm saying? So, Cruel, Inten Cruel Instructions is on Lifetime. Make sure if Cynthia, your girl, or even if she not, just go on over there and see what she's doing. And I'm pretty sure you'll be pleasantly surprised. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Y'all like and love. You got to help more. Remember to subscribe. And definitely like and share my videos. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.